have come for no other reason but to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please stand as we give God the glory and let's come on and let's worship Him.
Genesis 1 through 4. In the Old Testament, the book is Psalm. The verses are 1 through 4 of 96. Psalm 96. When you discovered it, when you found it, you will discover these words. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. His wonderful, his wonders among the people. Father God, we thank you now. God, we honor you. Lord, we praise you. God, we thank you for who you are and for what you do. Lord, we honor you today, Father God, for you're worthy of all the songs. You're worthy of all the praise. You're worthy of all the honor. Lord, we will proclaim your good news throughout the earth. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us one more time to come to the house of prayer. God, we honor you, Father God, for you have kept us. You've given us another chance. Lord, we didn't deserve it, but you keep right on blessing us. Lord, we fall short, but you keep picking us up. Lord, we honor you today, Father, for you are good. You are God, and your mercy endures to all generations. Lord, we thank you for being merciful. Lord, for we should have been cut off. We should have been dead. But mercy came running. If justice had had his way, Lord, we would have been out of here a long time. But God, you've given us another chance. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we thank you for your amazing grace. Your grace has brought us to this place one more time. You blessed us to travel. You blessed us to be back at the house. And Lord, we honor you today for you are God. We thank you, Father God, that you are greater than any other God. You are God by yourself. We, we adore you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We thank you for just being God. We say hallelujah today for you as God. You are God alone. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Lord, we messed up. God, we've fallen short. We've not done the things that are pleasing in your sight. And for that, Lord, we admit it. We own up to it. We ask you to forgive us for it. Now, Lord, don't hinder us from worshiping you today. Bless us, Father God, to reach heaven with our praise. Come in the room, manifest yourself in the room, that we will fall out with our evil ways. And all heavens will be rolled away. And all burdens will be thrown away. And Lord, we ask you to bless the word today. That the word will fall on good soul. That we will be better at 1 o'clock than we were at 10 o'clock. That we can run and tell other men, women, boys, and girls about this God we serve. And we thank you for being our God. Now, Lord, we ask you to rescue us from our sins. Bless us, Father God, as we walk with you. And bless us to honor you today. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, anointed, powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen and thank you.
Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Join us, please, as we sing. Acts chapter 4. 
Mm. Mm, yes. Y'all don't want to hear from two? Okay, let's do four. Acts chapter 4. If you would stand for the reading of the word. Acts chapter 4, verses 10 through 12 is where we are. I'm so glad you've been reading my notes. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. Acts chapter 2, Acts Amen. chapter 4. <clears throat> Acts chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. And you found it, you will discover these words. Let it be known to you all. Let it be known to you all. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom he, you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, yes, sir. by him this man stands here before you whole. Amen. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Amen. My focus, verse number 10, it says, let it be known. I want to talk about, let me be clear. Let me be clear. In our daily communication, communication is not communication. If it's not clear, right. speaking after, can you fix me? Communication has to be clear in order for communication to be taken well. When we speak and we want to be understood, communication has to be clear. There are three things that we focus on when we're presenting the gospel message, whether we're teaching, whether we're witnessing, or whether we're preaching. There are three things we must focus on. We must be relevant, meaning that it must fit the situation where we're in. We must be relevant. We can't just be talking to be talking. We must be relevant. It must fit the situation where we are now a part of. The second thing, it must be clear. It must be clear to the point that the people who are hearing the communication are people who understand what's going on. The wise writer says, in all of your getting, get an understanding. And you can't understand unless the message is clear. So it must be relevant. It must be clear. And thirdly, it must be accurate. The message must be one of accuracy. When your parents used to ask you, do you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> They're not talking about, did your ears process what I said? They're asking you, is your brain processing what I said? They're not asking you, they're not asking you whether or not your ears heard it. They already know you heard it. They want to make sure that what you heard is what they tried to deliver to you. And so in the process of letting you know that they want you to hear them, they want to be clear. Such it is with the word of God. When we look at the text, the apostle Peter is standing. And Peter talks in verse number 10 of Acts chapter 4. It is a continuation of Acts chapter 3. When you look at Acts chapter 3, the Bible says that Peter and John was headed up to the temple. And there was a crippled man there. 
And this crippled man was brought to the temple right at the gate, right at the front door, right while people, while people had to come through there. This crippled man would be placed there every single worship period. And it was a gate called Beautiful. This crippled man, this crippled man was placed at the gate, and when he was placed at the gate, he became instantly a beggar. He was asking from what the Bible calls arms in the King James Version. He was asking for arms, meaning he was asking for money, he was asking for supplies. And I know in Houston, all over the world, we can see people standing and begging. I dare believe this morning you drove past somebody standing on the corner. Early in the morning, before you could make it to Sunday school, someone was standing on the corner begging. And every beggar, every beggar has a right to beg, but every beggar has a good reason why they are begging. There's a brother that stands on the corner, a beltway eight in front. I've calculated at least 10 years. This same guy is standing on the corner. But he's smart enough to change his sign out every now and then. Yes, sir. He stands on the corner, and when you see him, oftentimes he's just dragging one leg. Mm -hmm. And he's going to make sure that you see him because he's going to walk right out in front of your car. Mm -hmm. And when he walks out in front of your car, he's doing this, saying, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. And he's making sure that you stop. I'm so surprised that he hadn't gotten run flat over with somebody reading their phone and didn't see him. His sign, his sign used to say, have cancer. Please help. But after the cancer sign got old and I myself started reasoning through this, I said, this man got a full beard. This man has long hair. Yes. This man is dragging his feet. And there are social services all over the world that will help you when you get down and out. Uh -huh. yep. But he says, I have cancer. Please help me. And I know, and some of you in the room can testify, that the moment chemo begins to hit, yep. your hair begins to disappear. I can testify that I'm not a victim of chemo. But my hair let go one day. And it never returned ever again. So this man has a full head of hair. He has, he has a full beard. And he's standing on the corner for some two years with the same sign or a similar sign saying he has cancer. Now he has changed his sign. His sign never says we'll work for food. He says, please help God bless you. And then the next time he changes his sign, he's always going about his business, and his business is to make as much as he can as a beggar on the corner of Beltway 8 in front of him. When I get in that lane to make that left turn, he's always in the way. So I've conditioned myself that when he is weaving and bobbing and weaving and wobbing throughout a traffic, I time my exit. I either slow it down when I exit or I speed it up when I exit. Because I can tell that he's going to limp from the second line to the third line. And once he gets to the third line, I accelerate. And it's simply because this man is still begging after 10 years. Let me just say to you today, if you have 10 years of bad trouble, if you have a friend or a family member that you've been having to help for 10 years, I want to tell you, it's time for you to set up a budget for them. It's time for you to get with them and say, let's see, you bring in this much and this much is going out, you're not going to ever be able to meet what your budget supplies or what your budget suggests. So you got to do something differently. So this is the case in Acts chapter 3. This man is a beggar. 
He's begging for money. He's begging for silver. He's begging for gold. Peter and John goes up to the temple this day. And he hits them up. Peter says to him, silver and gold have I not. But in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The Bible says that this man drank, he gained strength in his legs, he began to jump, he began to dance, he went into the temple and he celebrated God. It says to us today, when God does something extraordinary for you, you ought to celebrate God. When God does something that no one else can do but God, you ought to celebrate what God has done for you. Amen. When God does something that, that mama couldn't do, that, that daddy couldn't do, and, and something that your friends wouldn't do and your family members could not afford to do, you ought to celebrate God. But I want to tell you today, don't wait till God does, does something that you recognize as extraordinary because he does something extraordinary for you every day. Mama couldn't wake you up this morning. Your alarm clock didn't wake you up this morning. It was God's divine finger of love that reached down from heaven and touched you. As back home they would say, it talked you. And when it talked you, uh, your eyes flew wide open. You were able to put one foot in front of the other. And now you are a walking, living soul again. Amen. If it had not been for God's amazing grace, if it had not been for God's mercy, we wouldn't be here. Matter of fact, we don't deserve to be here. It's only because of God's amazing grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. There's always somebody that's watching you. And in the text, in, in Acts chapter 3 and Acts chapter 4, it is the Sanhedrin Council. It is those religious folks in authority. Religious folk will always shut down God's blessings. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about church going folk. Folk that will always come to a point to say, if you don't do it this way, then you're not doing it the right way. We have churches, we have denominations, we have people who have said that if you don't do it this way, you're not going to heaven. I said to you and I say to you again, if God is such a limited God, that he, God, if God is such a limited God that he's going to segregate himself to one location, to one denomination, to one group of people who will, who will say that he's going to heaven or they are going to heaven, we have a limited God. But I stop by to tell you on my way to the rapture that our God is not a limited God. He's an awesome God. And he wants as many of us to go to heaven as possible. For the Sanhedrin Council, the Bible said they arrested these preachers. Let me just say to the church, every time the preacher goes to jail, it doesn't mean that he did something wrong. I think I said it a couple more times. Every time the preacher goes to jail, it doesn't mean the preacher did something wrong. Every time the preacher goes to jail, it doesn't mean the preacher did something wrong. Sometimes those in authority are the ones who arrest them. As the text is, in the text, they arrested Peter and John and the limping man. Because they did something right. Because they testified of Jesus' goodness. And Peter, the Bible says Peter stood up with holy boldness. And when he stood up with holy boldness, he said, I'm talking to you all about the Jesus, the Jesus of Nazareth, whom you killed, whom you murdered, whom who you crucified. I'm talking about that Jesus and that same Jesus that you murdered, the same Jesus you crucified. God raised him from the dead. My first point to you today is that when you witness when you teach, when you preach Jesus Christ, the devil will always try to stop you. Whenever you stand and testify of the goodness of Jesus Christ, the devil will always try to bombard you. The devil will always try to push you around. The devil will always try to arrest your attention and distract you. Verse, verses number 1 and 2 we find in John chapter 4 
we find that the devil is brethren even in the church house. Not in this church, but the church around the corner down the street. The devil always make himself present. The Bible says in Job that when the sons of the God got together, the devil showed up also. The devil knows how to hitchhike. The devil knows how to thumb a ride. The, the devil knows how to latch on to you. Even come to the church. How many? Don't raise your hand. Don't look brown. Don't look, look to your side. But how many of you had the devil fronting you, confronting you, had the devil tempting you, that it's too late all to stay at home this morning? Yeah, my God. Whenever you do something right, the devil is always oh, man, man. after you. The devil is looking to stop you. When you look at verses 1 and 2, you find that the, the captain of the temple and the, the Sadducees came unto them, and they were being arrested by them. People will always be disturbed. My second point is, people, including the authorities, people will always be disturbed and react in a negative way when you do something for the Lord. Whenever you do something for the Lord, it's going to disturb some people. Whenever you get it right for the Lord, some people are going to act out. People will always be disturbed. Look at what happened. They arrested them. Folk will always be disturbed. Folk will always be disturbed when you're doing something for the Lord. Don't, don't, don't get surprised that people are not on your bandwagon. Don't be surprised because people are not cheering you on. Young people, don't worry about your friends and, and your cronies, your buddies, always cheering you on because you're making good grades and they're not. Because you're well-mannered and they're not. Because you got good conduct in there not. Folk don't cheer you on. But let me just tell you, those who are nerves, keep being a nerve. Because in five years, they will call you boss. When the life down here, as you know it, will be over. When you're no longer in school, they will call you boss because you have been a nerve. Don't get so distracted. This is the oldest, the oldest thing in the book. They make fun of you because you wear glasses. You need to let them know that I wear glasses because I read a lot. That's right. <laughs> I wear glasses because I'm learning a lot. I wear glasses because I'm doing the right thing at the right time, at the wrong, right moment. There's time for play and there's time for business. I wear glasses because I'm taking care of business. <laughs> Where are your glasses? Don't, don't, don't get so caught up on your dress code. Let me tell you, there are some people that wasted a lot of money because every time something comes in and, and they go and buy the latest fashion, don't get caught up on the latest fashion because guess what? Over 25 to 30 years, men and women have been changing from one thing to the other and when they get back around, I got the same clothes I had on 20 years ago simply because I never changed my wardrobe for other people. Fat is something that goes in and goes back out. Chick jeans came in. Chick jeans went out. 501s came in. 501s went out. Yeah, that's right. Now the, the jeans that, that's all cut up when you buy them, they just came in. Uh -huh. Because when we were in school, we had patches that covered our hole. We did it because we didn't have enough money to buy another wardrobe. And now people put patches on there just for style. Yeah. Just wait a minute. Yeah. Cut up jeans will go out and then it will be in style for you to wear clothes that, that are neat and they are clean and, and they are not dingy. Every fad that comes in will always go out. All you got to do is stick with what you got. My, my high school history teacher, Mr. Tommy White, has had a big old afro from day one. Tommy White had an afro when Mr. Leland had it. Oh, yeah. 
Everybody starts shaping their hair and tell me white kept his hair from. Tell me white wore, wore bell bottom shoes and bell bottom, his, his pants were bell bottom with, with platform shoes. And he was a bodybuilder and when he walked in class, he always bounced. And here we are, 45 years later, and Tommy White still spoke the same afro, the same bell bottom. Now children think that they just came in. Yeah. It was out 45 years ago. Yeah. People were breaking their ankles on platform shoes 45 years ago. Right. You, you, see, you see women that can't walk in shoes, but they just got to have them. I mean, they, they just got to have them. Brother, Brother Carter, you got some women that struggle. I mean, they look like a, a giraffe with a broken leg. But because it's in style, because everybody else is wearing it. One lady said, girl, don't take those shoes off and put you on some flat before you go to the doctor. I've already had six doctor bills behind these shoes, but I like them. And now you go from black bottom shoes to red bottom shoes, then you go from four inch heels to six inches heels, and you couldn't walk in the four inch heels. All right, right. It's the fads, but the fad comes in and the fads go out. Don't get caught up on stuff. If I was the same size, I would still have the same suits. Because pressure doesn't phase me. What other folk do doesn't phase me. What other people get caught up in, it doesn't phase me. I don't want to look like you anyway. And then sisters don't get caught up having the only one. Some sisters don't want to wear anything because somebody else may have had it. But let me tell you, you're going to run into some, somebody one day that got the same color, the same flower, the same sleeve that you have, and you're going to be so disturbed simply because somebody wore what you have. You can't afford to, to change fat every time somebody else changes fat. Say that. The text says they arrested them because of tradition. The authorities will get greatly disturbed and they will react negatively when you tell the truth. The next point, seen right here in verse number four, it says, God's word will never be hindered. You can do what you want to do. You can say what you want to say. You can act any way you want to act. You can clown the way you want to clown. You can do anything you want to do. But at the end of the day, God's word will not be hindered. That's why we have to make sure the word is accurate, make sure the word is clear, and make sure the word is relevant. God's word will never, ever be hindered. People can do what they want to do. As, as we move from chapter 3 to chapter 4, the word of God is expanding. And when we see in verse number 4 of chapter 4, we see 5,000 men coming to know the Lord. That's not including women and children. 5,000 men coming to know the, the Lord himself. The other day, the young man said, y'all show up here. And I got some giveaways for you. I mean, folk came out the woodworks. I mean, people were bombarding the place. I mean, it became simply dangerous. Folk got arrested because they showed up. And now, where are they this morning? I asked the question, where are they this morning? We will run when something new comes out to where, and we will not run to Jesus on Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Tuesday, whatever your day of worship is. Let me just share with you, we need to run to Jesus. When we have people that that's taking lives, children, children have died. The number of children are dying daily over senseless stuff. Innocent children laying in their bed, in their own house, and people shooting through the windows and through the walls, killing children. Let me share with you, you can be in the right place at the right time, and the devil will try to take you out of here. That's right. That's right. So why not be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing anyway? God's word will never be hindered. They tried to stop it, 5,000 folk. 
men, 5,000 men alone, not to mention women and children, get to know Jesus Christ. The next point is, tradition will always focus on the power in the name when success is achieved. Look at what it says. Look at, look at, look at what it says. What, what he says in, in verse number seven. When you look at verse number seven, you realize they want to know by what power. They want to know by what name has this man been, been healed. They were satisfied with the man baby. And that's how some of your friends and family members are. They are satisfied as long as you are down and out. They are satisfied as long as you're catching the bus. They are satisfied as long as you got to ask them for a ride. But the moment you get a ride, they start talking about everybody ain't able. And your return ought to be you right. Only those who walk with God, God gives the power in the name of Jesus. People get so dissatisfied when people start cutting them down. I mean, it, Children are waiting on likes. Children are waiting on shares. Children are waiting on emojis in order to decide that they have high self-esteem. The Bible says in Psalm 139, 14, that you are beautifully and wondrously made. Great are the handiworks of God. And the problem that you having is with your self-esteem. God says he loves you. God says you're special. God says you are right. You don't need anybody else to approve you. You don't need anybody else to confirm you. God says you are special. A lot, a, lot of folk, a lot of folk have gotten into a bad relationship because the, the lady said the other day, this boy in my DM say I'm pretty. I want to tell every woman, every girl in the room, you're beautiful and want to see me. You are pretty because God made you that way. You don't need a joker that just crawled out from the, under the rock to tell you. You pretty, and then then he goes on to say other things about you, and you just geek geek. And let me just share with you: God knew you were pretty when He made you. Amen. Matter of fact, God said, "Muy muy bonito, muy muy bonita." God says you are beautiful. And it doesn't matter what size you are. It doesn't matter what shape you're carrying around. All you can do is exercise, get plenty of sleep, and eat right after you've done that. God has made you who you are. Be proud of who you are. Right, right. You are special to God. You are somebody. You don't have to be the class, the class clown. You can be who you are just as you are. And whatever you do, know that God knows you're special. Right. Tradition will always focus on power in that name. They want to know by what power, by what name have you healed this man. It's just trifling for people to always talk somebody else down. And because you do good, we ought to be lifting you up. But because you do good, they try to tear you down. Let me just share with you. It doesn't make you look good. It does not make you look good when you tear other people down. You ought to be lifting each other up. And we walk up together because a rising tide raises all ships. You got to know that, that you're special. You got to know that you're somebody. And you have to know that regardless of what goes on around you, God has ordained you for such a time like this to do good things, and he's looking to do good for you. Amen. Traditions say no. Church folks say no. Hmm. Let me just put this in here. Regardless whether they got tattoos that you wouldn't have, God says they're special. Regardless of their lifestyle is turned upside down, God says they're special. Regardless if they got earrings in places that they'll not be, God says they're special. I say to the church, you can only clean them once you catch them. Let's make sure we get busy catching them. So if we get busy catching them, then the word of God can clean them. A fifth point for you today. God's spirit 
will move you to speak the truth. God's spirit, verse number eight, God's spirit will move you. The Bible says in verse number eight, Acts chapter four, then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit filled Peter, Peter filled with the, the Holy Spirit. The rulers of the people. He says to them, now look, let me tell y'all something. And I want to be clear. Philip, Peter, Peter says, I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit, and he didn't have to say, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Stop telling folk that you're saved. Stop telling folk that you're born again. Stop telling people that you're a Christian. They ought to be able to see your Christianity. Amen. The Bible says Peter stood up on this set day. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will auction you. The Holy Spirit will move upon you. The, the Holy Spirit will speak to you, and then you ought to speak by the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will move you to speak truth. Bible says that Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. He began to speak and then he said, if we, in verse number 9, if we this day are judged for a good deed, for this good deed that we've done to this helpless man, this good deed by what mean he was made well. We the people will question you. He will question your good deed. They will question whether or not your good deeds are really good deeds. They're trying to put standards on you. But God has already set the standard. Amen. Are you with me? God has already spent my, my sixth point. Your good deeds will always come into question. Get ready for it. Get used to it. Your good deeds will always come into question. Regardless of what you do. You just can't please people. You can't please people. Some folk been friends for 40 years and you still trying to figure out how to please them. Forget about it. You're not going to please people. People are always going to question even your best deeds. You might as well go on by your business. You, you, not, you might as well just go on, go on by your business. You might as well go on, go on somewhere because you will never, ever, ever please people. You will always be questioned concerning your good deeds. A seventh point to you today, we must be clear. We must be clear when we are speaking about Jesus. That brings us to verse number 10. He says, be it known unto you all. What he's really saying in the original Greek, let me be clear. You need to be clear when you're talking about Jesus. Amen. You need to be clear when you're talking about God. God should never be referred to as the man upstairs. I know that's right. God is not to be referred to as the big boss man. God is not to be referred to as the God who is a uni uni university God. It means that the universe has has changed things. God sent me a take, sent me a copy of a, a post, and, and this guy was talking about the universe and how you need to get involved with the universe, and the universe knows uh, knows what you need. And and I said to him, trash. I said to him, trash, trash, and more trash, because there's so much out here today that is so false when it comes to Jesus. That everybody got a, a video camera now. Everybody got a statement that they can make to the whole wide world. Let me tell you, you just stick with Jesus and you will do the right thing. Right. They want to talk about the universe. They want to talk about the earth was created by a big bang theory. If it was a bang theory, God made the bang. But my Bible doesn't say anything about the Bible. The Bible says that the earth was null and void. There was darkness upon the deep. And God spoke and light came jumping through the universe. We have come to a point in our lives where we think the creature ought to set the stage for the creator. But let me tell you, if it had not been for the creator, the creature would be no more. We must be clear. Yes, sir. Be clear. We must not be apologetic. Mm -hmm. 
We worship Jesus. Peter says that same Jesus that you crucified. The one that God raised from the dead. That's the power. This word power is dunamis power. It's dynamite power. Brother Whitlock, it's moving power. It's explosive power. It is dynamite power. He says this power, only the power that's in the name can heal one. Amen. And all these false prophets running around here. Come on, come on to the Coliseum, pay a few hundred dollars, and, and, I'm, I'm, and he's walking the floor like never before. And people are healing. First of all, the Bible does not say that Peter and John made an announcement. They didn't send out an email. They didn't send out a text message. They didn't get on Instagram. They just showed up, and as they went, God spoke. And as God spoke, people were healed. People throwing away their money, following behind some quack that doesn't know God. The Bible says that we must be clear when we are speaking about Jesus. It is in his name, it is his power by which we have salvation. My last point to you today, and I leave you alone, the fact of the matter is there is no power by which men should be saved other than Jesus' power. There is no name by which men can be saved other than the name of Jesus. Verse number 12 is clear. Verse number 12 is relevant. Verse number 12 is accurate. Verse 12 says to us that there is no name, not even a, a possible name, there is none, nor is it any way to salvation other than through Jesus Christ. Not Buddha, not Confucius, not Aristotle, not Muhammad. There is no other name unto God, no other name in heaven, no other name on earth by which men might be saved other than through Jesus the Christ. In his name is Jesus. Verse 12 says it like this, that nor is there any salvation in anything. There is no salvation in any other than Jesus himself. We need to talk about Jesus. Yeah. If we want to get crime to go down, yeah. we need to talk about Jesus. Yeah. If we want murder to shut down, yeah. we need to talk about Jesus. Yeah. If disrespect is going to shut down, yeah. we need to talk about Jesus because there is no power. Yeah. There is no name yeah. to salvation other than the name of Jesus. Yeah. Salvation has no other name yeah. than the name of Jesus. There is no name under earth. Yeah, right. There is no name in earth. Yeah, right. There is no name on earth. Yeah. Other than the name of Jesus. Yeah, right. There is no name in heaven. Yeah. Other than the name of Jesus. Yeah. There is no name given among men. Other than the name of Jesus. Yeah. There is no name or no other person. Other than the name of Jesus. Yeah. There is no other creature. Yeah. There is no other creation. Yeah. Other than the name of Jesus. There's no other thing. There's no other body. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Peter says there is salvation in his name. There is deliverance in his name. There is hope in his name. There is strength in his name. There is no name like Jesus. His name is Jesus. The one that was crucified. The one that God raised from the dead. His name is Jesus. Jesus the Christ. There is no other name under heaven by which men might be saved other than the name of Jesus. His name is Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the heart pouring in the body. Jesus, the bright and morning star. Jesus, the one who heals us. Jesus, the one who keeps us. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah to the name. His name is Jesus. It is Jesus that makes us who we are. His 
name is Jesus the Christ, the righteous son of the almighty God. He keeps us. He blesses us. He strengthens us. He gives us salvation. This word salvation means deliverance. Deliverance from the point where we are. If we're going to be delivered from here on this place, we're going to take, it's going to take Jesus. If we're going to be, uh, salvation is going to be real in our life. It's because of Jesus. His name is Jesus. Peter says, it's the same Jesus that you crucified on a skull hill called Calvary. It's the same Jesus that they hung high. It's the same Jesus they dropped low. It's the same Jesus they stressed right. It's the same Jesus they took him off the cross and laid him in a bottom tomb. It's the same Jesus, I tell you, that's sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercessions for you and me. It's that same Jesus that's going to catch a cloud. Catch a cloud one day. At the voice of the archangel. At the voice of the trumpet. He's going to catch a cloud. Come on back in here on a cloud. And the dead in Christ shall rise. And those of us who remain will be caught up with him. In midair. If you don't like praising down here. If the noise is too much for you down here. If things are too loud for you down here, if you're saved, if you're born again, when we get over there, we're going to shout all day. There will be no night. We're going to give glory to the Lamb of God, the righteous Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. His name is Jesus. There is no other name like this name. Demons tremble in his name. Deliverance happens in his name. Salvation is granted in his name. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. When you're in trouble, you better call on Jesus. When things are going right, you better call on Jesus. When things are upside down, you better call on Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There may be somebody here today who have not trusted Jesus as your personal Savior. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. You need to know Him. You need to shadow of doubt. You need to know Jesus. Rain is going to come. Right now we're saying it's too hot. We say, Lord, it's too much sun. It's bearing down on us. This sun is not like the sun I chopped cotton in. Then when it starts raining, Lord, hold back the rain. Lord, stop the rain. I'm telling you, a rainy day is coming. And you need to prepare now. And the only way to prepare now is to trust Jesus as your personal Savior. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. Will you trust Him? If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your opportunity. Will you bow your head with me and invite Him into your life? Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you honestly pray this prayer, now you are born again, you are saved, you're on your way to heaven. And now you need to get in your word, get in the Bible, a Bible teaching church, and let God use you. 
Jesus is rejoicing. The people are rejoicing. God, the Holy Spirit, are rejoicing that another soul that the devil had has been set free. If you're not in church, every person needs a church home. Every person needs a church home. Foxes have holes. That's their home. Birds in the air have nests. That's their home. Every person needs a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attraction and the main attention. You ought to trust him. The door is open. Will you come? Yes, come. Come to Jesus. Come on, come on to Jesus. Father God, we thank you now for gifts. We thank you for money. We thank you for increase. We thank you for employment. We thank you, Father God, for income. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us to give up to you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. As I've said before, all love offerings to Pastor Davis goes to the church. If you, if you feel out your own love, please put what you would give as a love offering to Pastor Davis during these summer months. Please give it to the New Beginning Church. Thank you for your love offering. Thank you for your gifts. I really appreciate what you have done and what you are doing. We just want during these summer months, uh, June, July, and August, we want all gifts to go to, to the church. Amen. So come September, Pastor Davis will be receiving your love offering once again. Amen. Say amen right like there. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's decide to stand. Follow first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the lowest ties offering and sacrifice. Impressions from the wheel to the front, rainfall the lowest tides off and then sacrificial gifts. 
Sophia will be receiving her first communion. Amen. She will be receiving her first communion. So when I serve the when I serve the choir, she'll come down and be served our individual. We're gonna celebrate. We wanna celebrate. Hallelujah. We wanna celebrate what God is, what God is doing. Amen. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. He's blessing our church even through young people. Amen. He is blessing us even, even to the young people. Hallelujah. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for falling short. Forgive us for not being obedient. And forgive us, Father God, for not doing that which is right. Lord, we know you are the one who we come to for forgiveness. We ask you to bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.
ourselves to you. She's coming for the first time to take her first communion. Hallelujah. We thank God for that one. We clap right where you can clap. What would you say, man? Amen. Amen. God is such a good God. Hallelujah. Jesus met with his disciples, and before he left, he said, he blessed the bread, he broke it, said, this is my body, be the only. And he poured wine into the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the New Testament for the remission of your sin. Drink your own. Fundraiser for Turning Hearts Youth to go on a domestic mission trip. So this Saturday we ask you to come out to uh, to the comedy show. Our uh, comedy show is, is sponsoring our uh, Black Prince. Come on out. It's a family friendly event. It is for children and adults, and uh, we want to laugh and have a have a good time since we uh, we've been locked in and cooped up so long. Amen. So come out and laugh. Also, uh, bring your school supplies. We want to teach our children how to give to others. Bring your school supplies for those who are less fortunate than we are, that's been damaged, their whole houses are missing in Mississippi. Uh, so you have this Wednesday to bring them as well as next Sunday. I'm going to see if I can get the guy to come by and pick them up for me next Sunday. So bring them Wednesday and next Sunday so we can flood the state of Mississippi just that Mississippi Delta area with school supplies. Amen? Amen. The Bible says they sung a hymn and they went out. Why don't you come and fellowship with us? 